welcome back to another video here on Free Wolf Photos. Today we're doing something a little bit different. As you've seen in one of my recent videos, I've been experimenting with Photo Lab 7 and DxO Photo Lab or Film Pack 7. Um, I'm not changing from on one. What I'm doing is really looking for things to help complement my workflow of what I do inside of on one. What I found though, is I need to start in DxO and then send things over to on one. So I'm going to kind of explain the workflow that I've been using in recent images, so to speak in this video. So let's go ahead and jump into the computer and take a look at that. So here we are inside of DxO and I'm not going to spend too much time explaining what I do in DxO because I don't think that that's what I want this video to be. I want it to be more about the workflow. So let's just assume that everything that I wanted to do inside of DxO Photo Lab uh, 7 has already been completed. Now I have a few options here. What I can do is right click and then click on export or hover over export and I can export this to an application. Now, you all know the application I'm going to send this to is not Film Pack 7. Instead, it's going to be on one. So I'm just going to click this drop down that says DxO Film Pack 7, and I'm going to select a, or select an application. I'm going to click select an application. And what this does is it opens up my applications here on my computer. And I'm just going to navigate down to on one. I'm going to open up on one 2023. You're seeing the 2024 version because I am a beta tester. I am using it, trying to help on one develop it uh, and make that a really great release. But I can't share anything about that other than the fact that I am a beta tester. So I'm going to go ahead and hit select. And now I get to choose what type of format do I want to send this as. And what I've been doing is sending it as a DNG with all corrections applied. So that way, everything that I've done inside of PhotoLab ends up inside of On1 as well. And I'm not looking at like a whole new image. And I like to send it as a DNG because that allows me to do a lot of the raw specific things that On1 offers. But if you happen to have Photo Lab 7 and maybe even Photo Lab 6, you can probably use a TIFF and you'll be just fine. I would definitely send it as 16-bit, but those are the only two options that I would send it as, either a DNG with all the corrections or a TIFF. I would not send a JPEG into On1. Uh, you just lose some capability when it comes to editing. I'm not going to add any watermarks, and I leave all of the EXIF data because I want to be able to read that information. And since I'm keeping it internal to myself, that's okay. So now if I hit export, what it's going to do is export this out, preparing that DNG file for on one photo raw. And when it's done, it does this for me and it opens up on one. Now we'll let that cycle through here, ran into some issues. I had to export it again. For whatever reason, it opened on one, but it didn't actually open the file. So I had to export it again. But of course, that's just how it goes. You hit the record button and things don't want to work the way that they usually do. What I will say is open on one photo raw before you send it to that application. And that should help bridge the photo lab version DNG into on one. Here we are inside of on one and now I have the complete range of flexibility that I would have, but I have a different raw file. As you can see, I still have access to my camera profiles over here. So if I want to change this profile later, I can. And that's one of the reasons why I like to work in DNGs when I export from photo lab. Um, and this just gives me that, that full range of flexibility. So maybe we'll do something like landscape here. And one of the things that I really wanted to do, because I think the color program or system inside of photo lab is pretty good. I just don't understand it yet. However, I do understand how colors work inside of on one. So if I just go ahead and pull up on the vibrance here, and then I can come over to my effects. And I can add in a color enhancer like I always do. I'll just use the foliage. You see how that makes everything turn green. That's a little 
too much. So I'll just dial back on that, turn this off and on. You can see I can make that look just the way that I want. And then I want to work on this particular flower. So I'm going to hit add and I'm going to throw in another color enhancer this time because I know I only want to work on this flower. What I'm going to do is mask. I'm going to use the color range mask and I know I'm going pretty quick here. So if you got questions about what I'm doing, leave it in the comment section below. Uh, and then I'm just going to select this flower, hit the letter O. Anything that's in white is going to get the adjustment. And I'm just going to pull down on this range until I'm only selecting that flower for the most part. And then maybe even pick up on the feather here, just a tad. And I think that that's good. What I want to do is get rid of all this other stuff because I don't want to adjust more than what I need to. So I'm going to use my paint out option and just brush over this. Uh, and I'm not going to make this perfect for the sake of not making this a very long video uh, or tutorial because I did just want to kind of capitalize the workflow and show the flexibility that I have with going from DxO, uh, especially as I learned to use that particular program a little bit more. Uh, the flexibility that I have to really enhance my images and take control of them. So now all I have to do is crank up maybe on the vibrancy of this particular uh, leaf and pull the saturation up just a touch. And I want to make it a little bit more orange. It's really, really pink. And that is kind of the natural color, but I want to make it a little bit more orange. So what I'm going to do is click on the eyedropper down here with the adjust hue. And I'm just going to click and drag. And that puts me into the purples. What I need to do is figure out a way to move this a little bit more towards maybe that won't happen just as much uh, today. What I can do is pull down on the saturation. I know how I'll fix this. So I'll hit add filter. And one of the filters that I don't use as often, but it works really, really great is replace color. Like I said, I wanted to make this flower a little bit more orange because we're going into the fall. So all I'm going to do is click my eyedropper here and grab the flower. Now this automatically turns it into orange. It goes all over the place. I don't really want that. So what I'm going to do is come back over here and copy the mask from that color enhancer that I used earlier, and then come back to replace color, click on the mask and paste that in. So now it's only applying that to that one area, which is really good because now what I can do is come in here and select the color that I want. I want something that's a little bit more orange. So we'll do something. And I also want it to be reddish. Uh, that's getting closer to what I want and maybe pull down on the brightness and even work the saturation. Now I do need to increase the range a bit here because it seems to be missing some of what's in there on that particular leaf. Now that just doesn't look anywhere near what I was expecting. So let's see if a blend mode will help make this more believable. I don't know if color is what I want, maybe. And then I'll just pull down on the opacity. We'll blend that in just a touch. And I think that that'll work for what I'm going for. If I turn it off, turn it on, it's a little bit more orange. It's better than what I was uh, originally having in the image. So now next thing that I'm going to do is I'll just go with a big softy. You guys know I normally do these in a uh, in a different way, but today I'm just going to go with a big softy, put on a big softy and look at that. that. That just makes this whole image look that much better in my personal opinion. And I could just keep going on and on and on with styling this particular image, but I think I'm good with the way that that is. So I'll hit done. And of course, this is going to save that image wherever I choose to save it. I have a folder called Sakote 2023. And what I would probably name this is like the final image name. And I can save this either as a TIFF, a DNG, I can save whatever I want. So that is the only downside is 
it doesn't go straight into the library. You do have to save it into the library, but I'm okay with that. I think that it all works out. Uh, this time, because I want to keep all of the uh, edits and the ability to come back and ma manage these edits, I'm going to save it as a DMG. And then I'm going to call this flower uh, on blog. Super, not on log, long, <laughs> flower on log. Super original, I know. And then all I have to do is hit save. And now I have this image saved inside of my folder. If you found value in today's content, then smash that like button. If you're looking to pick up a copy of On One Photo Raw 2024, which is going to be coming out pretty soon. I don't have a release date, but it's coming out pretty soon. I can save you some money at checkout if you use Free Will Photos 20. All right. It's going to be up on the screen. And if you got questions about On One, Photo Lab 7, and how I'm integrating them, then please let me know. Reach out in the comment section, and I'd love to answer that for you. Until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.